welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, you're really welcome. My name's Laura and this video is based on questions I've been getting recently about students who have sat their UCAT, got their results, but aren't really sure what their results actually mean. Lots of students have been getting in touch via my Instagram and on my Reddit community, so I thought I'd make a quick video to give you guys a better understanding of what your results mean and what to do if you haven't done as well as you had hoped in your UCAT. First of all, I just want to say a huge congratulations to everyone watching this who has done their UCAT and got their results. You should be super proud of whatever scores you've achieved and how much dedication and effort you put into it all. So question number one from students has been, is their score competitive enough to allow them to get into medicine? And what does their score actually mean? So in simple terms, the UCAT is scored from 300 to 900 points in each of the first four sections. And in the last section is scored from band one to band four. A lot of you want to know what the uh, sort of average score is and how you can work out where your score fits in with that. So it's hard to know about this year's results as each year it does vary slightly and you won't really be able to tell this until the very end of the cycle, which by this stage you've probably already chosen universities and started applying to medical schools. So if you want to sort of know where you sit in regards to UCAT scores, I suggest going from previous year's results. So I've gone and taken an average from the last couple of years and I've worked out that if you're scoring around 610 to 640 points in each section, you're scoring in the average sort of UCAT bracket. So in your overall points, if you've managed to get around 2,440 to 2,560 points, you're scoring an average score in your UCAT. This is really competitive and it should get you an offer from most medical schools. This is a great baseline to work from and should hopefully give you guys a better understanding of where you fit within this. If you're scoring above 2,560, you've got a really competitive and solid UCAT score. And if you are scoring below a score of 2,440, you are on the slightly lower side of UCAT scores. But do not worry, as this video is all about what to do if you've scored lower than you had hoped in your UCAT and what your options are next. So I've got six options in this video for you to consider if you're worried that your UCAT score is too low to get you into medical school. So what are your options? Option number one, this option is to consider applying to universities that don't weigh UCAT as heavily in their selection process as other universities. This is a really good idea as it will give you a much bigger opportunity of getting invited to interview and then potentially getting an offer for medicine. By selecting universities that don't weigh UCAT as high on their selection criteria, you're opening up a lot more opportunities for you to be invited to interviews and also for you to get offers. Make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and the bell to keep up to date with what I'm posting as I've been making a video all about where to apply with low UCAT scores. This is really important and choosing your medical school strategically to work in your advantage will give you a much bigger opportunity of getting into medicine this year. So option number two now, and this one is to consider applying to universities that look for the BMAT. So you may already be considering sitting the BMAT and if you are, that will be on the 3rd of November this year. But if you haven't thought about sitting the BMAT, it might be a good opportunity for you to open up another set of medical schools to apply to and potentially get offers from. The BMAT stands for Biomedical Admissions Test and you can sit it once per year. This is used by another eight roughly medical schools and dental schools in the UK and they do not ever need to know your UCAT score. So this is fabulous if you've not done as well as you'd hoped in your UCAT and want another chance of getting into medicine. So definitely check the links below if you're interested in this as I'll have put in more content about what to do for the BMAT. So option number three, and this one is to consider taking a gap year. 
Gap years can sound really scary and daunting and I was really nervous whenever I decided to take one. I never had planned to take a gap year and if you're not really sure of what one is, it's basically a year where you take it out of education. So for me personally, I chose to take one due to the COVID pandemic and I deferred my place for medicine at Queen's University Belfast and took this year out. I've actually really enjoyed taking a gap year. I wasn't really planning or prepared for it, but I've been able to do so many new things that I just never would have had the opportunity to do if I had gone straight into medical school. I've managed to do part-time jobs, volunteering, I've even managed to set up this YouTube channel and things that I just would never have had the chance to if I had started medicine straight away. If you are considering taking a gap year, it is a great opportunity to get the chance to reset your UCAT and also fill your year with so many amazing things. You could do work experience, you could go traveling, you could pick up new hobbies. There's so many things that you could consider doing. Gap years are a great way of unwinding, but also preparing for the next year. So if you've got a lower UCAT score than you're hoping for, it's a good chance to start preparing early and getting the scores boosted for next year's test cycle. So definitely consider taking a gap year. And if you are wanting to know anything more about gap years, check the description down below for some more ideas and things to think about if you are considering taking a gap year. So option number four, this one is something I'd never actually heard of before until I did a bit of research into it. And it's actually to take a foundation course for medicine. All a foundation program really is, is allowing you to get in with lower grades and selection criteria and only adding on one year on the front of your medical course. This is really, really great opportunity for students that aren't quite sure if their UCAT or their grades are strong enough to get them into other medical schools. And it also means that you come out with the exact same degree and qualifications at the end. So go and check down below in my description because I'll have put links to really, really useful websites to find out more about foundation programs. Option number five, and this one is to consider applying to other courses such as biomedical science, stratified medicine, straight sciences like biology, chemistry or physics, or other subjects that are quite heavily related to medicine. Applying to undergraduate courses like these allows you to then apply to medicine as a postgraduate. This is a great opportunity to allow you to get into medicine after doing your first degree. This means that you have another chance to apply to medical school and sit your UCAT. It also means that you get the full university experience and it can also allow you to be really prepared and look great on your medical admissions forms. Lots and lots of medical schools are really encouraging postgraduates to apply to them as they really like the idea of them being mature, very passionate and also very driven individuals. They know that postgraduates are more likely to succeed as they know that medicine is definitely something they want to do. The only real drawback to applying as a postgraduate is that you will have to spend a little bit longer at university than going straight into medicine. But it is a great opportunity if you haven't done as well as you hoped in your UCAT this year, as it will give you a lot longer to prepare for it and will allow you a full new opportunity to then apply for medicine as a postgraduate. If you'd like any more information about how to apply as a postgraduate, check the descriptions down below. So the sixth and final option that I've come up with is that you could potentially go and study abroad. Studying medicine abroad is a really great opportunity and it's something that I would have been really interested in doing. It means that you have the opportunity to go and experience a brand new culture and really immerse yourself in a new style of learning and just a new place in general. Studying abroad opens up lots more opportunities as a lot of medical schools worldwide don't need the same selection criteria as here in the UK. This means that your UCAT score may not be viewed as heavily as other parts of your application. This allows you to then apply to universities and study medicine without having to worry about a really high and competitive UCAT score. You can avail of lots of different scholarships and bursaries and it's a really great way of being able to meet new people from all over the world. 
So I would highly recommend checking this out and look down at the links in the description below for more information about medical schools abroad. So I hope this video has given you a better understanding of what your UCAT score actually means and how to calculate whether it's competitive, average or slightly lower than average. As you can see from this video, there are plenty more options and opportunities for you to take full advantage of. So do go away, do a bit of research and do not give up on your dream of studying medicine. Your UCAT score does not define your abilities as a doctor and there is always next year. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video. Bye bye.